How are you? How you doing, mate? How's it going? Good, mate. Good. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out. No worries, mate. No worries. You all right? Yeah, not too bad. I, I, you know, I believe we were meant to do this in Brisbane, but uh, mate, I got the flu, and no, I had to miss the show. I was crossing off that napalm show for months, and then three days before, I got real it, sick. Uh, that's the trouble, man. It just hits you. And it's nothing worse, though, is it? Yeah, nothing worse. That's it. And I didn't want to be that guy that just went along to the <laughs> show and just gave it to fucking ten thousand people. Well, you know. I, 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 it's weird because we the first flight, Barney changed it to uh, where we flew back through Doha, Doha, or whatever. Um, and um, both Barney and Danny got a bit sick, but I didn't, which is sort of lucky. But I usually get sick because I got young kids. <laughs> you know, once they get it from school, you've got it. You know what I mean? That's I know, man. Way. Yeah, but there you go, mate. There you go. I know. I know what that's like. It's, it's, it's interesting lights on the left there behind you. What's going on there? What's this? This is. My, yeah, yeah. you got the home studio vibe, okay? I got you. I I have, yeah. So this is my roadcaster, and then this is all my nerd stuff, <laughs> and then the rest of it is uh all action figures and stuff. I'm one of those. I should have started, should have got upstairs because you can see all my Lord of the Rings statues I've got. So yeah. What 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 do you got? Uh, quite a few. Um. I can't really. Do, I, I should have gone upstairs. I got the big, like, you know, those wetter statues. I got the Sauron, uh, got the Ring Ray. Uh, what else have I got? Um, I've, I've actually, I'm um, well, unbeknownst to my, my partner, uh, the huge, I got just just got the big, uh, smoke fire drake thing, you know, huge, yeah. massive guy. So that's been my thing lately. Um, I've always loved them, but you know, like several midlife crises, you know, hey, you know. <laughs> has to be done. It's, I mean, it's like you know, it's like you sit there, don't you, and you vibe off on it all. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's inspiration. I mean, I I love it. I come down here, I get me synth there, or I watch a movie. And I'm quite into my sort of uh, this Carl, Carl Jung philosopher thing, and I've been I've been doing a lot of that lately. Where I've ups and downs in life, and yeah, when he towards the end of it, well, in his fifties, he sort of. He had his own like towers where he would go and philosophize, you know, and uh, away from you know his family. And he, it is that man cave in a way, but it's where you think and just do your, you know, your your, your thing really. Uh, That's exactly important. right, hundred percent. It's important to have that, and then uh, especially with the world, it's just such a pain in the ass sometimes. And just stress on everyday life, you just go, ah, oh, I needed that, you know. So watched the soaker yesterday. It was pretty vibed about episode seven, you know. And yeah, there you go. That's me. <laughs> hey man, that's me too. You you've nailed me on the head. That's for sure. Because I come here. Obviously, I do a lot of my interviews from here. But I sit I, when I'm prepping. I've got my record player here, or I'll be sitting. I'll just be vibing off. Yeah, you know, things that I loved as a kid. Because I know. Well, read your book because we're we're here to talk about, of course, your book. Um. Where you mentioned growing up, you're a big Doctor Who and um, horror and, and and metal. You know, it, it it all comes hand in hand, doesn't it? Well, it's just it's it, it's it. We're literally growing up as a kid in a very small village near a place mm. called Iron Bridge, the first ever Iron Bridge, birthplace of industrial revolution, actually. On uh, which I, you know, you, you I sort of slept through all this historical stuff around me, like Darwin was born 16 miles away and all this kind of stuff. And but it's only now I realize that in some ways, and of course, close to Midlands, you know. Yeah. Um, but as a kid, I used to be my, my parents would work, my grandma would be looking after me, I'd be bashing the hell out of her buckets and all this kind of stuff, and trying to impersonate the slade tracks I heard or whatever. And um, it just went from there, went to school. I loved Doctor Who, impersonated the Daleks, you know. My, my mom always said. I can hear you bloody coming from miles away because you, you, you said exterminate, you know. And all this kind of <laughs> I love that. And that was just it, you know, Hammer Horror. Um, I used to record movie themes on my tape recorder, which freaked out my friends because they were like, well, don't you like the Bee Gees? Well, I do like the Bee Gees, but listen to the theme from tomorrow's people instead, you know. Um, and, of course, ironically, I'm into electronic music. And I so, again, going to this philosophical thing, it's like sometimes – 
it's important to not ret- you know not return to your job. well yeah in a way what made you happy as a kid yes it's really important as you get older because if you can do that I think it, it helps you really fo- then then refocus on the reality and day to day stresses if you have family and stuff and listen to your inner child a little bit you know once in a while I think it's good so um yeah um you know I had all that going I love it it's great you know. It's good with kids because they love it too. So <laughs> you pass it yeah. on. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I'm kind of worse than them in some respects. You know, it's uh, terrible in, in a good way. Yeah. How old are yours now? Uh, my son's almost five. My daughter's almost ten. They're both both in December. They're both Sagittarians like me. So the wife's like, they're going to turn into some creative wackos like you, aren't they? So <laughs> well, maybe, possibly, but you don't know. They might have. They might have your academic. Uh, uh, so I think they have a bit of both, you know. I mean, it's, yeah. it's they're still finding their feet a little bit. I know my lad, it, it, my lad loves coming down here and hitting the, hitting the synthesizers and see what weird sounds he can create. So you never know. His middle name is uh, Ted Sidio, which means Iron Dragon. So I, cho- I chose that on purpose because I say if he goes the academic route, sweet. But if he wants to go into some ultra drum and bass grindcore noise terrorist, he can choose ter- Ted Sidio. You know? <laughs> I love it. I love but it. Anyway. Rambling, but there you go. No, 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 no. This is what it's all about, dude. This is what it's all about. Because I've got, you know, I'm I'm actually a grandfather, believe it or not. Um, oh, I've got three kids, and all my kids are, are, are different. And my youngest, he's he's all about the uh Star Wars and, and and stuff like that. And so it's cool, man. It's cool to see you that little piece of yourself, as you were saying, passed on to your kids and sharing that. It's and, and it's, helps you. It's, it's very interesting to to watch. Uh I mean, which with my little son right now, he certainly just reminds me of me a little bit of some of the stuff he does, and it's just like, well, you know, it's interesting. I mean, they've yet to they yet to vibe on the Star Wars yet. That might happen. They were like, because my wife's Japanese, so they watch a lot of Japanese stuff. Like my yeah. son loves Ultraman, you know, so that's his thing at the moment. And I actually bought an Ultraman figure, which is I think it's more for me really than him, but it'll get he'll get it eventually, you know. But there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's a way. That's the way, but man, uh, I I gotta say, of course, we we're, were touching up about upon your tour recently. How how was that run? Because everyone that saw you, um, that didn't have the flu, said how fucking amazing it was. You guys were on fire. It was great for me because I, I you know, speaking honestly, mid February on the or late February on the campaign tour, I had a bit of a meltdown. Literally, I mean, you might as well call it some sort of breakdown or some description, yeah. you know. I mean, life has been a bit odd for me the past few years. My mum passed away last year. And, yeah, sorry. Um, but, yeah, well, it, 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 these things happen. And I think it was a culmination of things. And I just took some time out for a few months. So I did – that was my first show back for a few – I took a few months out. And um, my friend Adam from John – John the took, took John Cook, the guitarist, he has a band called Corrupt Marrow Alter. And Adam was a, a bass player from that, so he stepped in. So my first show back was a, a thing called Camp Festival, which is like a, a rock, a rock pop festival for families. So I did that. Then we did the Australian New Zealand. But I mean, I love it down your way. You know, I mean, it's um, it's really hard to describe for me, but it has a bit of everything. You know, it's, it's uh, for me. Um, the shows are great. You know, it was, it was good to be back with the guys and. Um, you know, I lost a little, I lost a couple of pounds and tried to do a bit of exercising, so I felt a bit better in myself. You know, and um, shows are great. You know, I mean, it was really good. I mean, same works down there. They're like family to us. You know, Brad and Dicey. So, um, oh yeah, best dudes. You know, so it was it was great. You know, and um, I went to New Zealand, which was great. I I ran over to the wet caves again as usual and checked out some geeky stuff there and, and some amazing fish and chips down there. It was all brilliant. You know. Great, and the, the crowds were, were lovely. You know, good, good, uh, good reaction. So it was, it was, uh, it was great. You know, I loved it. And even uh, I know you're getting asked about it a lot, but boy, George was in Brisbane. I, I was, I was getting my people are like, he's here. Like that was crazy. It's pretty strange. I mean, um, you know, it's uh, we'd missed. I think well, I think our flight had got cancelled, so we, we were on the same flight. Dicey's near the tour manager from. Boy George and or mm. something like that, and so um, we, you know, I know it was, I know uh, he likes the cramps and stuff like that. So I'll, uh, so I, you know, uh, and yeah, he came down. I mean, I didn't get to meet him or anything like that. Um, but they were rocking out at the back, and uh, 
for me, I'm like 55. So, you know, when I was at school, it, you know, rocking the, the metal, you know, my friends were like rocking the culture club and that kind of stuff. And we did this competition at school, uh, Top of the Pops thing, which I don't think I even told about on English TV anymore. I never watch normal TV, so I don't know. Uh, but I we did we did Dio uh, Rainbow in the Dark, you know. So I was impersonating Dio. I got I got all the words down. I'm not singing it, but I got all the words down and everything. Uh, but my friend, she was doing uh, the Culture Club, you know. And of course, they came number one. I came number two. So it's kind of surreal when you is you know you're like flash forward like thirty five years yeah, and yeah. Boy George gig. It's just like it's bloody bizarre. I feel like pinch me back when I was like I don't know how old are we. 14 or 15 or something you can't we can't write this kind of this <laughs> I'm making it up. it's crazy it is so crazy. Yeah, that's the crazy journey of life in a way and that's i guess why the book is here i suppose you know in a strange way just to kind of document that stuff but also the fact that the actual to have a book itself is bizarre you know really. it's great it's a great book man life of course life and, and napalm death but uh mate it's I, I love how it's set out almost year to year, you know, documenting from obviously your your childhood right up until um only a couple of years ago. And then in between you've got people jumping in and out telling their side of the story. It's it's a really great read, mate. But what made it right now the best time for you to uh tell your story? I think sometimes it's a series of events, you know, because the pandemic, I, I've always mentioned this, you know, it obviously it affected everybody. And mm. uh, it. I was aware of it affecting me at the time, but even in hindsight, even more, I think, because we just done, we just finished a, a, one of our campaign, the Musical Destruction Tours, four days later, everything was kind of in lockdown. And up until that point, I'd never been home more than probably six weeks at a time. You know, I was always veering off here and there. My son was young. Um, my, my wife was paranoid, like, don't go outside, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, where I am at the moment is my home studio. It's about 10 yeah. miles from where we, where we live. Um, the, the old napalm house, as we call Danny lives here, you know, um, when he's not in LA. But um, And so I was, it was like, where, what do I do? It, it's like, you know, yeah, I'm with the family, but I also need to be creative. Mm. It's just that. That is what it is with me. It's, it's, I don't have a choice in a way. Uh, or, or a lot of people, I think, I suppose. Um, uh, so there was, and then I did a publishing deal for some of my other projects. Uh, try. I've been really. I've been really trying to get into, uh, you know, like uh, soundtracks and stuff for independent movies and, or whatever. Really, just. But so that this guy would say, "Well, yeah, we can probably we can probably try and make that happen." But have you ever thought about doing a book? You know. I thought, well, I used to laugh about it over a beer. You know, I'd say, oh, this is a tale for the book, you know. Um, well, then, well, why not? Why, why not? And I thought, well, okay. And, you know, you think about it. You go, well, yeah. It's, it, it, you sit there and realise that, well, I joined an A-bomb when I was 19. I was doing my little band before then. And now I'm like 54, 52, 53 at the time. And I'm like, well, what a crazy sort of trip it's been, you know. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to think about the journey but also, you know, the people you've met, the heroes you've met, and why not, really? Well, let's just go for it. It just seems like, you know, I tend to just go for it. I mean, you know, I've, I've done shows where I've played through three bands in a night where people think I'm crazy. I'm like, yeah, but you only live once, don't you? So why not, really? You know, and uh, so that was it, just that that symbol. Uh, and also, I kind of, I didn't know how to think, could perceive it. I was like, well, I kind of find it... Um, Interesting, but also funny at the same time. I thought, well, why not? You know, yeah. who gets to who gets to do a book, really? You know, I suppose. Are you going to do an audio version? There's been talk about it. A few people asked, and the, the studio I, I record a lot of stuff at. He does a lot of audio books, and he was um, saying, "Well, we should." Have, we, we, I, I know the company have been there. Uh, uh, I think they're contemplating it. I think the pre-orders have done have done pretty good, from what I believe. Um, Reactions have been good. Uh, I think it's going to be translated into Spanish for the Latin America crowd because obviously, you know, down there, in bombs. Yes. Quite down, yeah, you know, down there. And of course, you know, I mean, I have a hard time understanding my own accent. So, I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's probably, yeah, so it's, it's interesting for me. It's, uh, 
I think that was one of the reasons to do it. It's not just telling you the tale of me, I guess, and what happened, but it's also sort of like, well, you know, it was cliche. You know, I wanted to be in a band from a very early age, and that's what I wanted to do. And got lucky, I suppose, and met the Napalm guys and managed to do it. And I think if I could do it, other people could do it. You know, it's it's there. It's just you got to. Mm. Um, and it's just the I don't know the, the, the life. I mean, I would have been, I would have met my wife, I would have met my family if it wasn't for Napalm and taking that step out the door. And I was a bit of a homebody back in the day. I mean, I was you know you couldn't get me out of the bloody house. You know, I was like you know I was always a little bit you know village boy boy until Mickey and Napalm said, "Come on, move to finally we stopped catching the train and moved to Brom." And I did, and you know, opened the door into a much wider world, really. You know, and then it was hitting the ground running. Like I love, uh, I, I, as I said before, I really love this story and I love the book and, and everything you've done, but how was it trying to remember everything? Now, that's a lot. I mean, you crammed in a lot in that time. Was that difficult <laughs> to sort of go, oh man, and like the timeline or when things happen or did it sort of really come flowing back quite easily for you? Well, I think because um, my friend Dave Everly is a uh, freelance journalist for Kerrang and various other people at Battle Hammer. Um, he was got a commission to sort of post the question because I thought, do you want to write it yourself? And I was like, well, I could try. My handwriting is terrible for a staff. Um, and I thought, well, I don't, it's probably better if somebody kind of like jogs my memory. Mm. You know, he'd been out on a few trips with us a few years back. I mean, he came into Malaysia with us. When we first went down there, which was, was an amazing experience, really. Um, I love that. I love Malaysia from the fact that it's it's, it's some of these, some countries are just untouched by like popular popular music. It, it, it's there, but yeah. they're really underground as well, which I loved. Um, but um, so yeah, he, he he said, "Well, should we start it year by year?" I said, "Well, yeah, it seems like a good, a good idea." But for some reason, you know, um, I can barely remember last week on something. But when it comes to like the life I've led, it's 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 in there in my head, you know, most of it. There's probably things I don't remember. Um, and so it wasn't too hard as such. It was just a series of, like, long and long, long conversations, really. And then, of course, you uh, have to correct a few dates and things like that and then go through the process of picking up some photos which were in the book, which will be in the book, um, to sort of, you know, emphasise certain times. But it wasn't too difficult. It was just a... A lot, of, a lot of talking, which I can do, I guess. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I, I do, uh, I do feel that way, and I can't remember what I did last week. But if you ask me, like random pop culture stuff about like figures and stuff, or, or a band, I'll be like straight up. Well, yeah, I mean, this is just the way we are wired, mate. It's, it's, yeah. it's a, you know, I mean, I, you know, my. My wife, well, my daughter's got some homework, and what's this? I'm like, I'm not quite sure, but you know, I can tell you when Bela Lugosi started in Dracula in 1931, and, <laughs> and there was a Spanish alternative being filmed simultaneously in the evening. She's like, well, what's use that? What use is that to anybody else? Like, I don't know, but it's useful to me. <laughs> um, so, we, um, yeah, it's a strange thing, but it's the way we're wired, you know. I mean, we're, yeah, individuality, so they say. That's right. No, that's that's definitely how I'm wired, mate. But uh, how how was it? You know, talking to the other band band members about the book. Did you uh, tell them that you were doing it for? Obviously, you know, your Barney's, you know, and the other guys. They've, they've written some yeah. stuff in there. How was that? Did, were they a bit nervous about it? Were you a bit nervous about approaching them about it? Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't so much nervous about it. I think. I think. Um... I think I mean you know I I wanted Barn to be to be to have his say. I mean he's probably he's probably a, it was pretty kind to me because we me and me were like chalk and cheese. We you know we've been brothers and friends for years, but we were very different people and we we're quite stubborn. You know when it comes to band stuff, we kind of want the same thing, but, but sometimes we have, we go completely opposite directions to come to the same point, which again can be frustrating sometimes. But. Um, I wasn't so much nervous. I mean, Danny's quite. I mean, Danny's like, man, are you sure you want to go out and tell everybody all this stuff? I'm like, well, what am I actually telling them? Really, I don't know. Just what happened uh, in in my life and our lives, really. But I wasn't so much nervous. I think it was. I think they were probably more nervous than me. Of like, you know, I don't know. Just what am I going to say? I'm like, well, what is it to say? Really, just uh, 
you know, there's some Barney was kind of like, well, no one really wants does everyone does everyone really want to hear those kind of silly stories? I'm like, yeah, I think they probably do. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> um, you know, but it's also mixed in with I like to think it's mixed in with like some grounding stuff about growing up and and family, which is important yes. to me. And also the sort of uh, you know, the the, the the stress, not so much the stress, but I mean, for me, family's always been important, and I have my family, of course, but Napalm are my other family and were a family to me for, for many years before I had my biological kind of family, I suppose. Yes. Um, and so that's stuff that I think a lot of bands do go through, and it's just the uh, the uh, the dynamics of it in how we are as people, you know. And, you, again, you, I, you know, you, I realized, I suppose that I did have, I did have a story to tell if people were interested, you know. Um, but it was, it wasn't so much. Um, I, was, I think you know, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite paranoid as well. I just, I just hope that people find it, find it interesting, you know. Um, but I don't know. I mean, whether Barney would do one. They seems they're both. I'm reasonably private. I don't know whether am I a private person. I don't know. But, but it's just, it's just. Uh, um, I think the other guys are probably more nervous than me. I think you know, I guess. But what if I was going to say it? And, yeah. What goes on tour? The old well, thing. I mean, but I mean, yeah. I mean, what goes on? Tour, I mean, in the early years, a lot of drinking, a lot of craziness, a lot of things that. Uh, as an older man now, you know, I'm paying the price for you. Your body keeps keeps a toll, as it says, you know, uh, yeah. so to speak. But I mean, that was that. Um, uh, but I think it, that was. Maybe some other reason for doing the book is it's like if I can do it, anyone can kind of do it in a way. You follow your heart, you follow your beliefs. If if that's you know, but you know, there's also in the industry there's dangers along the way. I mean, you know, you, you when you're a musician, you're creative. You're not if you're not thinking about money or getting paid. You know, if, if you're lucky for to become a, a, your life, then you, you can you can make a living from it, but. Mm. Always the not always the goal, but there are in the industry people out there, the sharks who can come and take advantage. And yeah, you know, Napalm had some times where we we didn't know we we be able to carry on. That's just uh, it's important to look reflect on those times and then look at where we are at the moment, where things are pretty cool, you know, and go away. You know, there's the darkness, but we managed to get through it. Which if it, it, it not not even in musical terms, just in life. I mean, when there's that stress and you're like, whoa. Can I get through this? You can. It always seems really dark, but there is light there too, you know, to go towards, I think. I think that's a really important message as well, you know, especially these days and and how hectic everything is right now with, you know, costs of living and things like that. Everyone needs to still have a dream, and I think that's what's important about the book too, is, you know, you're saying that, you know, if you could do it, other people can do it too. And I think that's that's people should read it and and draw inspiration and and dream, man, and just do it. Well, I think you know it's you know I mean speaking honestly, you know yeah I'm this musician I've done all these projects and stuff, but you know being mar- becoming being mar- being married it was it was a completely different dip challenge to me because then that's different dynamics than going away on tour and you have family yeah. responsibilities and. You know, I'm not unique. We we, we all we all um, face day to day stresses, and I, I'm terrible for looking at philosophical quotes at the moment. I'm like, I've got my little Instagram feeds. I'm going, oh my god, look at it. And some quotes, you know, I'm going. Well, and there's one something about you know, trying to be in the moment is very hard sometimes. Yes. You know, we can look, we can dwell on the past, and I certainly have done that a little bit, and it's fed into my dark sky burial stuff. I deal with a little bit. It's quite therapeutic. But then you go, okay, what's the future going to bring? We're worried about the future. We're worried about the future. Well, of course, that's natural. But if you, I think if you can't really ground yourself in the now, it's hard to look at that. That ought to be a future because it's only one day at a time. I know it's very easy to say, but it is only one day at a time. You know, it's easy. You know, it's, and sometimes when it's, in, I mean, the dark periods, you, you don't think you're going to get through it. But I, with the book, Napalm had some seriously dark periods. When I met my wife, I didn't know uh, we had inside the century media, and um, Barney was doing some of the stuff. The band was we were, we were quite fractured. We all had our different things going on, and I thought, oh well, you know, maybe I'll go and live in Japan. And I started playing shows in Brooklyn and in the states. Mm. 
So they were just a bit in the flash, it changed. Bomb was like, well, let's go for it. And I said, oh. I was like, oh, all right. And we did. And here we are. So it, it, it's just, it's you just never know what the hell is going to happen in life. <laughs> the, the curveballs come left and right, you know. So uh, if anything, the book's about the curveballs as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But also, you know, uh, you know, you're talking about the scene back in the 80s regarding the punks versus the metalheads. And even for me, 25 years ago, it was uh, things like that. But it was more the hip-hop kids versus the metal kids. Um, yeah. But it seems now that the lines seem to be blurred. Kids these days are, are more accepting and uh, I guess the genres are, are melding to gl- – have you noticed that out on your travels, that it's it's less us versus them? I I think so. I think it. I mean, coming from a small village, going to, to the, the the nearest place was Birmingham for shows. It was always hard to see those uh, the shows because there was only four, there was four or five of us. My best friend's dad was from Birmingham, so mm. someone had to take, someone had to miss out on some gigs. You know what I mean? But, you know, uh, but like if you went to see Iron Maiden in the earlier days, pre pre Bruce Dickinson, there were a lot of punks because for some reason. I still think even though Killers is a metal record, a lot of punks got into it. It was weird. Yeah. But there was always that divide. Um, but when I really went to the Mermaid to, to see Napalm Death perform for the first time before I joined them, and I met Nick, Nick and Justin, um, me and my friend Mitch were all like, you know, leathered out, cut off, denim jacket, that kind of vibe. But the punks are very accepting. I think things are changing a little bit then because because of the extremity of music, be it like Venom, Celtic Frost, Discharge, it was blurring. You know, it, to me, I was like, well, Discharge to me sounds kind of like Venom. I was like, well, this is all right, you know. So I think the seeds were being sown and mm-hmm. through the age, as the years progressed, you know. Um, certainly, I could be veering off here, but you look at the band like Paradise Lost, who were quite, quite doomy and heavy but then became quite gothic you know yep and people start these little seeds these seeds are sown where people start to cross over you know a little bit and maybe fear if i the techno techno thing or whatever and uh and as you like me i mean i've we've always liked i love always liked different kinds of music through john peel john peel was really important to me the dj back in the 80s because he championed nate barn but he also would play alternative music yes. i think it's natural over the years, I think, in some ways, uh, even through parents and kids, that music gets interwoven, you know. And so, a, a gig, you don't, you, you know, it is, it is slightly more open minded. I mean, there is that close mindedness, I suppose, still, but not not as much because, you, of course, you have the internet and you're just getting bombarded with different sounds all the time. Really, I think. Um, and sometimes people, not so much now, but used to get that used to get that uh, question: Well, is napalm the most extreme thing? Well, not necessarily, because there's always that cycle of evolution. You know, it's, I mean, I look at the bands that influenced me to where what's going on now, and sometimes I might listen to something and go, "That's a little, that's, that's, that's hard to get into." You know, I have to read re- and listen to it again. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but you don't see that the, the whole versus thing as much. I don't think. And that's a good thing, really. Yeah, I agree. I agree because I got the shit kicked out of me several times. <laughs> so I, I copped it. I copped it from those people. But now it seems to be a different thing. So no, I mean, I, I, I think in England, I'm, I, I, I think in the early eighties, it, it might have been that punk versus metal thing, you know. Yeah. But certainly, certainly the Mermaid, which is just down the road from where I am, which is not called the Mermaid anymore, but the old punk gigs were. I mean. There was a really, there was always a real friendliness. I mean, when me and my mate walked in there, we were the first two, probably the first two metal kids. So, so, and so metal because we were tape trading at the same time and we were listening to yeah. all this crazy punk from, from the States anyway. Uh, because we just, I just started trading tapes with Bill from Carcass. And and so all that was going on. And, and then I said, I said, Bill, I see this band Napalm, you've got to check him out, you know. So Bill would come down from Liverpool and Ken and, and then, then all of a sudden, two metal kids in metal movement became ten. You know, and yeah. we were tape trading, so we were trading with our friends. They were sending us like possessed album advanced tapes and a crazy period. And of to, 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 it was brilliant trading tapes. You know, and, and all the music was just you know we'd be getting. I'd be getting a tape of like 
several tour around, but also like maybe Siege from Boston, all these hot, just loads of different mixtures. Um, but Mermaid was always the the punks area just seemed quite open. But I think that that was changing. But I never I never experienced too much kind of us versus them, which is good. That is good. Know? I mean, I still get the occasion to look when I drop my kids off to school, to be honest. I'm like, who's this lung egg? <laughs> Me too. I get that too. Yeah. I get the, yeah. Oh, you, you're you in a band? Yeah, yeah. So there's that thing. I mean, my daughter was a private, my daughter went to private school for a while. And then yeah. before we, and um, I remember chatting to the headmaster a lot because he loved his metal, you know. And uh, everyone's going, oh, God, you really must care about, your husband must really care about your daughter's education, which of course they do. Yes. I'd be chatting to him last, he'd be saying, oh, I just saw a Kiss the other night, man. They're amazing. So it was, he was loved it, you know. But yeah, I don't know. I'm veering off as I tend to be. Oh, but, um, but, uh, but no, I mean, but no. Um it's good things that things are crossing over because as a music fan, it only means that there can be more hybrid extensions of genres, which I find interesting. You know, it's like nothing better than, than coming across something and you go, that's insane. How they've managed to 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 merge this with this and make it work. Because that's also a challenge in itself, you know, mm. to do that kind of stuff. It's really good. You know, I, I, I'm a big fan of, like, stuff that takes you uh, unexpectedly somewhere else, really. Me too. Me too, actually. You know, big soundtracks and and, and stuff like that. But I, I know we've only got a couple of minutes left because Zoom's about to... The boot us yeah. I hate how Zoom does that. Sorry, my friend. But uh, I did want to. I did want to ask you real quickly about your friend uh, Faith No More, Billy Gould. Are you still good mates with him? Yeah, Billy's great. I mean, uh, you know, I loved Faith No More as a massive fan, and then he uh, we met each other mutually on the real thing kind of tour, uh, and became good friends ever since. Yes. You know, and good guy. Uh, he was during pand- pandemic. He was it, one of there was a Chile Chilean hip hop band that he, he was releasing. He, he got me to do a, a remix for them, which was something I'd never done before. But Billy's uh, Billy's great. He's just like you know. Like sometimes even when I sit in occasionally, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in his living room watching his MTV A Tech videos. I have to kind of pinch myself. I mean, Billy's Billy's living room here. This is pretty trippy, but he's a lovely guy, totally down to earth and. I like that. I aspire always to try and be as down to earth as possible, you know, really. You guys yeah. have always seemed to be maybe, I don't know, kindred spirits to me from a musical style. You know, you, you see the weave in and out of, of heavy bands like Bru- Brujeria. Like, yeah. yeah and yeah. I, I love that new Brujo album. It's great, man. It's really yeah, that, yeah, that, that's, that, that's I'm glad it's come out. We started tinkling away on that a long time ago. Um, so it's good to see that it, 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 it's out. I'm not sure when I'm going to start. I haven't played with them for a while because they've been doing their stuff. I've been doing mine. But, um, yeah, Billy's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's just always, it's interesting, But I think, because he probably came from a very different musical background. And I met Brujo through Billy because they went to high school together, you know? Yeah. So they headlined the Reading Festival back in, I don't know, 1990, and, and uh Billy's like, meet my friend Brujo. I'm like, oh, who the hell's Brujo? And he just comes waltzing over, you know. He's like, man, there's pizza's crap over here. I had to bring some pizza on the plane with me from LA. And I'm like, oh, well, sorry. And then uh, that was our meeting, you know. We became friends ever since. And the Brujo I think, grew because he loved Napalm and Terrorizer. Yeah. And they wanted to speak for the, the Latin community, which I think the, the band does. I mean, it's funny lyrics as well, but. You know, in the early days, especially in in, the, in California, it was predominantly Latinos turning up at napalm shows. They loved the crazy, crazy fast stuff. You know, so um, yeah. But Billy's a great guy. He's you know always 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 there to say hello. You know, and has helped me. I did a, tro- a band called Tronos years ago. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of we're sort of thing. I said, would you mind? Would you want to play bass? And he's like, yeah, sure. And I'm like, my God, Bill said, yeah, that's nice, you know. And uh, it's cool. It's nice to have, you know, when you meet people. I mean, I met Dio once, and he was so down to earth. And oh man, been nice and that kind of. I think that's quite inspiring to me, really. You know, to try and, you know, have your foot on the ground as well. I think. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Did you watch that doco? The- I was here. I haven't watched it. I need to watch it. When I, I'm, yeah. Probably, I might. I've got a couple of hours today. Where I might try and finally get to, to watch it because 
It's like as soon as I think of something, five minutes later, I forgot about it and I've moved on to something else. I'm terrible. But um I do need to watch it because I heard it's pretty good. So I saw it in the cinema and yeah. uh man, goosebumps the whole yeah. way. Man, yeah. what a legend. What a legend. Like it was it was yeah, I mean yeah, amazing. And um when I met him, it was through my friend Simon Effamy, who who um, does our same for us and has produced Paris Lost Albums and whatever and um, he was, yeah. He, I met the guy, and he was just like talking about we were talking about curry houses in Birmingham in the nineteen eighties that he went to when they were rehearsing for Heaven and Hell, and how much he liked napalm and told me not to give up. And oh man, I was drinking beer at the time, and I kind of had a bit of a tear in my eye. My wife was all laughing. She was, what, "This is what you're what you crying for." So I was just met God, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that oh, was kind of it, you know. So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, he's a really nice guy, and uh, yeah, inspiring. I felt. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And of course, I mean the the book is it. What's the actual release date of the book? I've been trying to find the actual release date. It's October fifteenth. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you've got a few things here and there. You've got the in store things going on and stuff. So that's going to be uh, fun to do for, for for something different. It's been it's interesting to compared to doing an album. It's a different thing in a while, in a way. But yeah, it's a, a lot of fun. Uh, chatting <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely talking all about it and and telling your story and uh well, i mean what what's next you the, the book and are you more touring or what's what's the the new year going to be looking like for you uh i've got a tour i've got a few shows this year with napalm and then we've got japan in december uh and then got a venomous concept tour in january in england awesome uh we haven't played for a while. Uh, some more shows with Napalm, but I think April is when I really, really want to sort of, you know, s- slap everyone across the wrist and go. It's time for a new Napalm album. Really, I've got, I've got, I've got like multitudes of riffs and ideas and concepts I'd like to explore. And it's been a long time uh, since we since I actually started. We started recording Throws in like August of 2017. It didn't come out till September, uh, till 2020. You know? Oh man, because it takes a while. Yeah, we were, we recorded about twenty three songs, and so it took a while to finish them all. Um, so I think this time it might be, I would like to record a load, but then kind of work on section. Yeah, but um, it's definitely time to 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 get into that for me, you know. Um, but otherwise, because yeah, I end up losing ideas and they resurface. A few I've got me out got my little collection of bits and pieces all over this, but all over the place. But um, so there's that really coming up, and then. Uh, I should probably do a few more Dark Sky Bay records because like, that's my little therapeutic hobby stroke recording thing. And then, um, yeah, there's all stuff bubbling under with me, really. You know, um, probably going to do some more book stuff next year, hopefully. We'll see, see how it all goes. You know, um, busy, you know. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I love it, mate. But uh, Zoom's about to give boot us off in a minute. I hate how it does that. You know, I don't know. During the pandemic, they're just like, ah, talk as long as you want. But, yeah, they give us the timing now. I don't know why. But, uh, brother, it's been a really, really great chat with you tonight. I appreciate you taking the time, um, you know, especially after all the touring and stuff you did down here. And I'm still super sad I couldn't see you, but hopefully I'll see you guys very, very soon. I want to wish you all the best with the t- the book and uh, all your next projects. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll be back, we'll be back there soon. I hope either with Napalm or I mean, I know we're talking to Brad with about Brewer at some point, so I'll make sure I'm in there for that because it's, I love the pies down there, mate. They're really good. Yeah, <laughs> so, let's go. So the, other things as well, of course. But I do, you know, I do, uh, you know. So it's, yeah, it's not. I, I do like it down there. You know, I keep on telling telling the missus we should move, but no, we'll see. But um, oh, uh, but yeah, great, mate. No, lovely. Good to chat. Good to chat. Thank you, mate. And yeah, all the best, mate. Thank you so much. Take care, mate. You too. Cheers, mate.